In this video, I will show you some of the information that is available for individual reactions in a reaction block. So if we right click on the autoclave, which has a reaction block, and we go to the R1 page, this will display information for the first three reactions in this reaction block. So the first information that we can have a look at is the required extent of the reaction, the extent achieved, and the extent error. And we'll see for this one we asked for 95% of the nickel oxide to react. It's achieved 95% and therefore the error is zero. It also shows us the reacting mass of nickel oxide and then the heat of reaction at zero degrees at the reaction pressure. If we click on the more button and we can see the relative error, the reacting moles and then for the heat of reaction we've got the heat of reaction in kilojoules per kilogram, per kilojoules per kilomole, and the total heat for this individual reaction in kilowatts. In addition, if we go to the RB page, we can turn on additional information for each reactant. So in the area where it says display extra information, energy information, at the moment is just basic info. If I click on the down arrow, you can see that we can get it to display additional energy information. In our case, let's just go and turn on product info. So in other words, we want to display energy at the product conditions. So if I click on the product info, and then I go back to the R1 page, and in this case I'm going to have to run syscad again for it to refresh that information. And there we can see, we can now see the heat of reaction at the product temperature. If we go back to the RB page, and if you look at the SP change info, and that stands for the species change, at the moment that's basic info. If I click down, so let's go with all species both, just to display what you'll see. So if I click on that, and then go back to R1, and what it will now show is the change in mass and moles for all of the species that are involved in the reaction. So in our case, nickel oxide, sulfuric acid, nickel sulfate and water and it's showing you how many tons per hour and kilomoles per hour will change for that reaction. One last thing that we can see per reaction if we go back to the RB page and that's the one that says show SP requirements or show species requirements. At the moment that's off. If we click down you'll see there's a few different options that you as a user can choose. So let's go for as mass select and in this case, we can select which species we want to see the requirements are for. Now, this is very useful for many reagents. So in our case, the reagent we're using is sulfuric acid. So let's say for H2SO4. So that's the species we'll choose. If I go back to the R1 page, and now we'll see it'll have the estimated species requirement for sulfuric acid. I'll have to push the run button. And you'll see it's saying for this reaction, for the amount of nickel oxide that's coming in, you're going to need 1.23 tons per hour of sulfuric acid. And that's actually very useful for when you're trying to calculate the amount of reagent that you might need. And so you can see there's a lot of additional information that can be obtained per reaction. 